This episode of Stay in the Obvious is picking up on the tail end of episode 134. So if you have not listened to that episode, you should do so because what's going to happen here will not entirely make sense because I'm not going to go back and recap. And I'm still feeling very, very mellow, so I, there will not be the usual screaming, shouting, and stuff during the intro segment. I'm just going to chill here. You can scream and shout with all your might. See, this is where I would normally be screaming and shouting. Right now, I'd be making some kind of comment about your ass and Obama's cock. And this is where I'd be talking about how maybe what's really going on is that you are wrong and I am right. But I'm I'm really fucking mellow today. I guess, too, I went out, had a little bike ride. I needed to make a run to a store. I discovered that. Oh, and this is where I would mention that I am the Great One himself, and this is Stating the Obvious, the weapons platform from which I launched the cruise missile, the nuclear tipped cruise missile of my intellect. I had to go to the store today, because I discovered that nowhere around here, for some odd reason, I did not have a quarter inch stereo to quarter inch stereo, or no, eighth inch. Excuse me, an eighth-inch stereo. Basically, I needed to hook my iPod and another stereo into an amplifier. He's like, I did not have the right cord for that. It was really annoying. I couldn't believe I didn't have one of those floating around. So I took a little bike ride through town today down the trail. It was a little windy, but it was cold. Got some exercise, got some sunlight. Having kind of a downtime right now in my work world so that's great catching up on personal projects and doing some wedding photography that I shot a wedding recently so I'm finishing up on that and of course recording staying the obvious and just generally relaxing and I might even man I'm feeling the urge to play a little computer game today too and today is March the 18th 2013 this is stating the obvious brought to you by the cynical libertarian society c-y-n-l-i-b-s-o-c dot com on the internet you can send us email at. Sorry, I got distracted by a email pop up on the computer. You can send us email at God. That's dog spelled backwards. God at c y n l i b s o c dot com, and the us is of course in the control room on the other side of the plate plate glass over there. Is my. Sorry, I'm reading email. All right, yes, thank you, Randy. Is Randy, the lovely and adorable Randy, is telling me to stop fucking reading email and do the goddamn podcast. (laughs) And that's why she's here, because I need somebody to fucking yell at me when I'm fucking up. Not that I ever fuck up, right? Yeah, well, hey, I have not. I've, I've only fucked up once in the last 60 seconds. Oh, yeah, twice, actually. (laughs) <laughs> All right, three times. <laughs> All right, let's get back to what I was talking about. The state needs crime and it needs criminals because that justifies its existence. Justifies its existence. Without crime, who is, who is, who is in danger? of not making money and who is in danger of not having a purpose and who is in danger of not having a reason to exist if there is no crime. Well, let's go through some of the possibilities here. The prison industrial complex. Without crime, what would all of these people... And and keep in mind, when I talk about all of these industrial complexes, all the people who work for them directly, all the people who supply things for them, who work for them indirectly, you know, all of the people who are dependent on the things that they do without criminals. So when you, when you're sitting here and you're saying, well, we need the state to prevent crime. We need the police and we need the government and we need laws to prevent crime. 
the state and the police and the government have no desire, none, to prevent crime. Because if there is no crime, then there are going to be a whole bunch of people who are unemployed. A whole bunch of people who don't make money. So who are these people? Now we get back to what I was just trying to start into. Who are these people? Who will not have a purpose? Who will not have a job? Who will not have an income if the state were in fact to prevent crime, which will never happen? The prison industrial complex will have no purpose unless there is crime. The psychiatry industrial complex while we'll still have something of a purpose, we'll make a lot less money without criminals. The therapy industrial complex, while it will still exist and make money, we'll make a lot less money without criminals. The DUI industrial complex, the entire thing of driving under the influence and all the bullshit you go through when you get arrested for DUI, all the therapy you get sent to, and all the classes you have to go to, and all the devices for monitoring like the breathalyzers installed in your car, and the ankle bracelets, all of this stuff, you know, all of the fees you pay to the court, and all of the fees that you pay to the police, and everything involved in DUI. It's a giant fucking money-making scam. Talk to people and the lawyers if you try to fight it. I mean, even if you don't try to fight it, the lawyers for the state who are there to make sure that you do get prosecuted and that you do all this stuff, all of these people are making a fucking, fucking fortune. Talk to somebody who has had a DUI and about all the things they've had to go through and all the money that it has cost them. It has nothing to do with reducing crime. There's no crime reduced. By arresting people for DUI, it's a money-making scam, which you buy into because you're stupid. Because you say, well, those people arrested for DUI, they might have killed a child. Well, yes, they might have. I'll, I'm gonna, you know what, because, because I'm just going to finish this, I'm not going to go into anything else, this might be a short episode, because I have time, I always think that, don't I? I always think I have plenty of time. I'm going to digress just a little bit for a moment while I'm harping about DUIs. You know, those of you out there, the 99 percenters, the statists, the stupid people, oh, we have to arrest people for DUI because they might run over a child and kill the child because they're drunk. Well, yeah, they might. But you also might run over a child and kill the child when you're sober. Or, because while you're drunk at home, you might hit your child in the face and kill the child. You don't need to be driving a car to kill somebody when you're drunk. You don't need to be drunk while you're driving a car to kill somebody. I find it fascinating that and and this is the arg this there's a lot of arguments in this and of course this we can bring in the texting while you're driving thing well yeah so if you can kill somebody well, well okay so what about if you're driving your car and you're drinking coffee you know while you're driving your car you can be distracted by virtually anything and kill somebody so therefore should we make it illegal to do anything when you're driving a car other than driving a car because you might kill somebody when you take it to the logical extreme the answer must be yes so that's the car part you know this anything you're doing in an automobile while you're driving can cause you to hit a person with your car and kill them the idea of singling out a couple of things is absolutely fucking ludicrous and it's just a money-making scam. If you hit somebody with your car and kill them, then you've killed somebody. It doesn't fucking matter. And this is what those of you who are statists, I know my blood pressure is growing up a little bit here, growing up, going up. This is what those of you who are statists are too fucking stupid to understand because you're a fucking, fucking stupid fucking statist. This is where, all right, now I've got three threads going. This is where hate crimes come from. Well, yeah, it, it, you killed somebody. It doesn't matter if when you kill another person, you kill them because you hit them with your car because you were drunk, or if you kill them because you hit them with your car because you were reaching for your coffee cup. The person is still fucking dead, 
okay? It doesn't fucking matter if you were drunk or sober. It's just like hate crimes. Well, we need to prosecute people for killing. No, if you kill somebody, it doesn't matter if you kill them because they're ugly or if you kill them because they're black or if you kill them because you were pissed. It doesn't matter why you kill them. All that matters is you killed them. They're dead. This is what those of you who are, and this is why those of you who are statists will say, oh, we don't believe in controlling people's thoughts. Well, of course you do. You believe in punishing people for their thoughts and for specific actions. Either you killed somebody or you didn't. If you killed somebody because you didn't like their skin color, or if you killed somebody because they were random, it doesn't make a difference. If you killed somebody because you were drunk, or if you killed somebody because you were re fucking using your text, cell phone, thingy, bobber, whatever the fuck those are called, or if you killed somebody because you were reaching for your coffee cup, it doesn't fucking matter. What matters is the person is dead. Again, there's already a law that says you can't kill people. So we need more laws. Oh, but you can't kill people because you're driving drunk. So does that imply it's okay to kill people if you're not driving drunk? I mean, well, apparently, like according to my female friend, right, who said the driver's handbook for Colorado says you can hit bicyclists with your car if they're in the road and it's legal. I mean, apparently you can. Apparently there are situations in which you can fucking kill people according to the state. Oh, and of course, if they're brown, and if they happen to live in Afghanistan, you can sure as fuck kill them with flying robots, right? Because they're just sand niggers. Who cares? I mean, that Obama's killing those people. That's perfectly okay. So certainly, there are situations in which the state very openly says you can kill people. What was the other thread I had open? Oh, yes. So that's the automobile and killing side. Then there's the drunk side. Right? We have to... DUIs. We have to arrest people for DUI. Because when you're driving and you're drunk, you're more likely to have an accident and you could kill somebody. And so that's always used as the justification. Well, you're more likely. Okay. So if the justification for DUI is that you're more likely... and to have a wreck and kill somebody, and that's why we can arrest you. Well, how about this? Men, and we all know men are, you know, men are evil, and women are, of course, the paragons of virtue. Never do anything wrong, unless, of course, you count stabbing their children 100 times and then killing the five-year-old next-door neighbor girl, like that one cunt in Illinois did. But you know, women are, of course, paragons of virtue who desperately want to go into combat so they can kill people, although killing grown men with AK-47s is not as easy as killing your children. So anyway, women, these paragons of virtue, we all know that women, these paragons of virtue, are more likely to get raped by men if the men are drunk, which has always baffled me because when I get drunk, I couldn't get a hard-on to save my life, but that's just me. Anyhow... Too much information? I don't think so. Anyhow, so if that is true, if drunk men are more likely to rape women than sober men, shouldn't we arrest men for being drunk in the presence of women? Well, no, of course we're not going to do that. Because then the entire restaurant and bar industry would fucking collapse. Back to, speaking of collapse, back to the state and why the state wants to make sure criminal activity continues and in fact increases in order for their own self-preservation. So who else needs criminal activity in order to keep going? Well, the justice industrial complex, the judges, the courts, all the court clerks, you know, the bailiffs, all of this stuff. If there's nobody cycling through the criminal justice system, none of these people have a job anymore because they sure as fuck don't have any skills that are useful in the real world. And of course, you know, big obvious one, the police industrial complex. If there's no crime, what do you need police officers for? Other than, you know, harassing bicyclists on CSU campus for not stopping at stop signs and, you know, DUI, but it, you know, but all of these stuff, all of these things are crimes. They are against the law. Even though there are no victims, I'm getting ahead of myself again. But so without crime, the police 
industrial complex has no fucking purpose. The military industrial complex is increasingly used to uh, pursue criminals and things like that, domestic criminal <laughs> motorcycles zapping by. It was increasingly used like in the war on drugs and what do you call it? Immigration patrolling and things like that. The military industrial complex, which of course relies on wars as well, but is also becoming increasingly reliant on crime here in the homeland, as it's called, apparently, because we have a Department of Homeland Security, even though nobody I've ever met in my entire life has ever referred to America as the homeland. Very Nazi sounding. But anyhow, and of course, the military and police supplies industrial complex. I mean, the people who make combat boots, the people who make the belts that the police stick all their little gadgets on, the people who make the guns the police carry, all of you anti-gun people who think there should be no guns. Really? Do you think the police and the military should be disarmed? Well, no, of course not. You're not anti-gun. You're anti-people being able to defend themselves. You want everybody to be dependent upon the state. You want them to be dependent upon the police for their defense so that the police are needed. All the people who make <clears throat> excuse me, military and police uniforms, all the people who make body armor, all the people who make helmets, all the people who make all the little gadgets and cool things that the police and the military use to kill people. Without crime, those people would, for the most part, go out of business. Right? Who's going to build? Who's going to build? Well, who's going to build? And who's going to buy all of these armored cars that all of these police departments are buying if there's no crime and if there's no need for a police department? And so, again, the, the point of this as I go down this list is remember, you're saying that in an anarcho capitalist society, you, those of you who are stupid, you 99 percenters, you're saying in an ANCAP society, it would never work because there would be all these gangs running around killing people and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying to you that no, we already have a society in which gangs run around and kill people. We just call them the police. And the police don't stop anybody from running around killing anybody else because if they did, the police would be out of a job. Okay, an anarcho-capitalist society would be far more peaceful than the one we live in now because there would be no incentive for police forces and military forces to militarize and kill people because there would be no one for them to kill because the few criminals, the warlords, the gangs who did exist would be very quickly eliminated and killed by private citizens defending themselves because in an ANCAP society, you would be able to defend yourself. There would not be the police coming around, you know, doing, there would not be gun control laws to prevent you from having a gun to defend yourself and thus needing the police. When somebody came and tried to break into your house or kill your children or rape you or kill you, you would shoot them in the face. They would die. There would be no crime. You know, people always say, well, you, we, and this is one of those things that's, because statists will use this same argument I'm about to use. They'll say, wow, we have to give people the death penalty because dead people don't commit crimes. I'm like, yes, that part is exactly true. The problem is the death penalty doesn't need to be part of some long, drawn-out, uh, fucked-up status system like it is now. The death penalty is absolutely true. If you come, you break into my house, and let's say, for example, you try to harm my child, and I shoot you in the fucking face. Yes. You're not going to harm any more children. You're not going to commit any more crimes. But there doesn't need to be a state for that to happen. There doesn't need to be flying robots killing brown people in Afghanistan. And there doesn't need to be people paying 40% of their income in taxes. And there don't need to be thousands and thousands of laws. And there doesn't need to be socialized health care. And there doesn't need to be fucking uh, walls on the borders and shooting brown people from Mexico who are trying to come to America to get a job. You can have the death penalty for criminals without all of those things. They, you don't need a state in order to prevent crime. Now you're going to say, oh, but that, you know, that's when they'll just, there won't be any justice. There won't be any trial by jury. Really, we have justice now, do we? 
So nobody has ever been falsely accused and falsely convicted. Really, really, there's nobody in prison for crimes they didn't commit. Really, there's nobody on death row who is innocent. Really. And again, this brings us back to, no, it, it's real fuck for normal people, for people who are not like you, for people who are not in the 99%, for those of us who are not status, those who are ANCAPs, we're not going to run around and just randomly kill people. If somebody is committing a real crime against you, remember, real crime, there, there's only, how many crimes are there? I haven't counted. Real, real crimes, here we go. Theft, arson, rape, murder, assault. That's, that's it. I'm just trying to think if I missed something. That's it. There's five fucking crimes. Okay? It's real obvious to see if somebody is doing one of those things. If somebody is doing one of those things to you, you shoot them in the fucking face. Anything else, you leave them alone. I mean, this is not fucking hard, but it's hard for you because you're stupid because you're a statist. Because you, as a statist, don't recognize right from wrong. Right? You sit there and you're the people who cheer when the ATF you know, it goes to Waco and shoots these people and burns down their building and says, yes, we had to burn the children to save the children. And all this other shit. That was a little... Well, it was on topic, but it was... Not in the sequence. Who else needs there to be crime in order to keep making money and keep having a purpose? The TSA industrial complex. I mean, blow, flying an airplane into a building, it's its crime. Uh, all this other stuff. Who Security and monitoring industrial complex. All these people who make money selling to the police forces and the military. Uh, surveillance equipment would be a better way to say it than security and monitoring. Surveillance all the people who manufacture these drones that are being bought by police forces, all these people who manufacture the cameras that the police forces are putting all over the place to watch people, the Department of Homeland Security Industrial Complex. I mean, without crime, what are these guys going to do for a fucking living? We got some of these assholes, DHS assholes here in Fort Collins. They're based at the federal building that has the post office in it and they just stand around all day with their thumbs up their asses and they drive around in their DHS cars. I mean, excuse me, it's Fort fucking Collins. Okay, now, other than, of course, the fact that we have a CDC building here and a regional biocontainment laboratory and I know a little bit more about these things, I... Well, no, I've talked about it in the past. I can say, I, being as the fact that I've worked there and I know what kind of stuff is in there, I can understand that there would be some security out there because there's shit in those buildings that can kill lots and lots of people. And by the way, the shit in those buildings, the viruses and other agents in those buildings that can kill literally 90% of the population within 14 days, this is a fact, all that's brought to you by the state. Again, without the state, who would be doing bioweapons research? Oh, did I? I mean, not to imply that there are any biological weapons in the regional biocontainment laboratory at Fort Collins, Colorado. No, of course not. Didn't mean to imply that at all. But you know, without the state, who would be making biological weapons? In an ANCAP society, who's going to make biological weapons. So the Department of Homeland Security, they need crime. They need violence to keep going. And of course, the anger management industrial complex. We had to send these criminals to anger management. I mean, can you imagine? Some of these people are legitimate anger management issues. Others, well, I mean, they got fucking arrested and beat down because they had a taillight that was broken out and they didn't kiss the cop's ass when he pulled them over and talked smack to them. So now, after you know getting beat down by the pigs and after getting a ticket for having headlight out and after getting a ticket for uh, resisting arrest, then you have to go to anger management. So the police and the state do not have any interest at all in preventing crime. 
they need more crime, they need more criminals, because that is what gives them a purpose, okay? The state creates crime in two ways. They protect criminals, and of course, they pass laws. Now, I'll start with passing laws. Now, I've talked about this before. I mean, there's all these things that the state makes illegal, and once they're made illegal, well, now... Then there are all the people engaging in this activity are criminals. So simply by making more laws, you increase the number of criminals. So you say, well, the crime rate went up. Well, what do you mean by crime rate? Well, all the people breaking laws. It's like, so you passed more laws than there were last year. So of course the crime rate went up from last year because you've created more criminals simply by the default of creating more laws. And virtually all of the laws in our society are completely victimless. For example, if I go out and I rape a woman, who is the victim? Well, the woman is the victim. Pretty much even the stupidest fucking statist can figure this out. Okay, now, if I'm driving down the road and I'm not wearing a seatbelt while I'm driving my car, who's the victim? Who is the victim? Nobody. Now, let's say that I go into a public school and I have my AK-47 and I have a 30-round magazine in that AK-47 and I shoot some kids. Who, are the, who is the victim? Well, the children are the victims. We have victims. Now, let's say I'm at home and I have an AK-47 and a 30-round magazine and the government, the state, makes 30-round magazines illegal. Okay, who's the victim? Who is the victim? But I have instantly become a criminal and the crime rate has gone up. And so obviously now the police need more manpower and more funding because look, the crime rate is going up. There's more criminals than ever. We made 30-round magazines illegal, and now there's more criminals than there were before. We obviously need more funding and more police officers, and we need more laws, because we've got to make the streets safe. And the second way the state creates crime is, of course, by protecting criminals. And I mean, just try this one. Somebody breaks into your house and rapes your wife. Okay, great. Go find that person and kill them. You're going to go to jail. Why are you going to go to jail? Because you killed a criminal. That criminal, while that criminal was alive, would have to go to courts, would have to get therapy, would have to eat food, would have to be put into a prison, would have to be transported, would have to be monitored, would have to be watched, would have to wear prison clothing. All of this stuff would generate economic activity, which would be paid for by your tax money. When you kill a criminal, you are depriving the police industrial complex, the justice industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, you are depriving all of those industrial complexes which are figments of the state. You are depriving them of money. When you kill a criminal, you are, quote-unquote, stealing from the state. The state must keep criminals alive just like it has to create more criminals because that's how the state makes money. That's where the state gets its power from. If the criminals are all killed, do you know, even when somebody's on death row, do you notice how long it takes before they actually get around to killing them? Because if somebody was just sentenced to death and then taken out behind the building and shot, all the years that they are on death row, all the years that they're in a prison, that's income for the people who feed them, for the people who provide them with clothing, for the people who run the prison, for the people who provide the prison with electricity, for the guards who work there, for the people who make the guns the guards carry, for the people who make the uniforms the guards wear. That's why, even with death row, we don't just kill people once they're quote-unquote proven guilty. You keep them alive for a long and then they have appeals and appeals. And, and this is good. When you have the fact that we have the appeals is good for the people who are put on death row and they're innocent. Right? This is a good thing. I'm not saying it's not. 
But the main point of keeping them alive all this time isn't to give innocent people a chance to prove they're innocent because the system doesn't give a fuck if you're innocent. The purpose of keeping them alive all that time is because it puts more money into the system. So public school shootings, because this is this is a big thing right now. Because you people are also fucking losers, such fucking losers. Let me talk right. <clears throat> As I have said before, shooting children in public school is a huge part of what is needed to <coughs> have me coughing in the microphone. Okay. Public school shootings are a requirement to keep the state intact. Every time there's a public school shooting, there's fear, there's panic. You know, again, it all of these industrial complexes I've been talking about are empowered by this. Uh, people want more laws, they want more gun control. They want you know, there, there, it's, there's more of blaming white men while ignoring, as I keep talking about, women who kill their own children. You know, the, the bitch in Illinois who killed her son by stabbing him a thousand times and then killed the five-year-old next-door neighbor girl. You know, all of that stuff can easily be ignored by pointing to the very occasional shooting in a public school. And of course, as I've pointed out a gazillion times in the past, the thing that all public school shootings have in common isn't that they're done by white men and isn't that they involve guns. The one common thing they have in common that everybody ignores and needs to pay attention to is the fact that they all take place in public schools. Nobody in the state wants to stop public school shootings because the state benefits from them. The state can pass more laws, can raise more taxes, can give more weapons to the police, can become more intrusive, can put up more cameras, can put up more metal detectors, can put up oh, the metal detector industry, metal detector industry complex. There's somebody who makes a lot of money off crime. There's another reason we cannot eliminate crime. All right, so all of these things feed into making the state more and more powerful. Again, the state... The state is like any, the state is, all right, how, how are we on time, Randy? Oh, this is great. All right, I have time for this. Let, I'm going to do this. Let me do this now because this is a good place to kind of elaborate on this. I'm still formulating a little bit of this whole theory when it comes to the terminologies that I use. So we'll see how this goes. There are now. In ANCAP circles, it's said that there's you know there's two ways to get money. You can either essentially steal the money or you can earn the money. And I'm good with that. But now when we get to the earning part, and the equivalent I want to make is a business, and the state is of course not a business, and that's kind of what I'm going to explain. When you're trying to make money, you're trying to make a business, create a business, make money. There are, I think, two ways you can go about doing this. And here's how they break down. What now? Now, hold on. I'm, I'm, confusing, my, I'm confusing my thoughts. Let me start this over. Sorry, guys. I do not have notes on this. Totally flying. And like I said, I have not solidified this argument yet. Okay, you're going to start a business, you want to make money. To do this, you have to solve a problem. If you want to make money, you have to, or let me put it a better way, you, to make money, you have to create value for somebody else. Now, how do you create value for somebody else? You create value for somebody else by adding something. Here we go. This is, this is how I need to explain this. Got it now. You create value for other people by adding something to their experience, to their abilities, to their capabilities, whatever it is that they didn't have before. Or you can create value for somebody by solving a problem for them. Now, I do think that there's, there's overlap in there, so I'm still not sure this is exactly the correct way to explain this. 
if you are making money, if you're creating value by solving a problem, if that problem goes away, you can no longer make money by solving that problem. Now, if you're creating value for other people by simply adding to what they already have, then you're, or by adding value to existing things, or by expanding their possibilities, or making more things available to them, then there doesn't necessarily need to be a problem for you to solve. And I don't have good examples for this yet, like I say, because I was not intending to go into this. But it'll get me where I need to go, which is this. You know, the state, for the most part, and I've actually kind of talked about this in the first part of this, the state quote unquote solves problems. When you look at everything the state claims it does, it's trying to solve problems. Okay, if those problems go away, the state no longer has a purpose. You know, the state is going to fix poverty. That's why we have food stamps and welfare, because we're gonna fix poverty. Well, okay, so you have to keep having poor people. Otherwise, there's no reason for the state you know, the state is going to protect you from criminals. Again, if the state eliminates crime, then the state has no reason to exist. So, it all, so if you start a business, all right, now let's get back to the analogy here. If you start a business and the problem you're solving, what, 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 what problem are we solving? If you start a business and, shit, I can't think of a good example. I hate that. Okay, nonprofits. If you have a nonprofit, it's not a business. I'm making this up. If you have a nonprofit, this is one I've done before because it's nice and easy. If you have a nonprofit and your purpose is to help homeless people, you're not going to help homeless people stop being homeless because if you eliminate homeless people, your nonprofit doesn't have a purpose anymore. And keep in mind, as the person running the nonprofit, you're getting paid for that. Just because the nonprofits don't make a profit doesn't mean the people running them aren't getting paid. That's why I always like to use this example. Again, people who are in the uh, in industrial complex of helping the homeless have no desire to eliminate homelessness. They don't want people to stop being homeless. They just want to pretend they're solving the problem because if there are no homeless people, then the people who get paid to run homeless shelters have to go get another job. Okay? If you have a business where you're adding value no matter what, say for example, you have a business where you uh, make websites. Okay, so people are can always going to be able to, people will always be wanting more websites as long as that's beneficial. There doesn't need to be sort of this direct problem that needs to be perpetuated because you can make a website for somebody, but then you can create another website for them. You can create another website. You can create more and more and it all builds and you're creating all this wealth along the way. But with the problem scenario, with the problem of homelessness or the problem of crime, you know, if those problems are fixed so that they don't come back, it's like Stefan Molyneux talks in one of the videos I'm going to link where he talks about how well, if we could prevent cavities and dentists wouldn't be needing to fill cavities anymore. So it's in the best interest of the dentist ultimately over the long run that people have cavities because that way they make more money. It's like I've said before about cancer research. The reason there's not a cure for cancer is because the pharmaceutical corporations make a fucking fortune on chemotherapy. Okay, the same thing with the state. When you're sitting there going, well, in an anarcho-capitalist society, there's going to be warlords running around killing everybody. There'll be crime everywhere. Well, we already have crime everywhere. We have crime everywhere because the state doesn't prevent crime, regardless of what Thomas Hobbes thinks. He's a dumbass. Okay? The state perpetuates crime. If there is no crime, there's no reason for a state. Therefore, the state must make sure there is always crime so that the state has a reason to exist. That's why if you kill a criminal, the state will simply put you in the criminal's place. Because the state needs criminals going through the system to keep it alive, to keep money coming into it, and keep creating the illusion that the state is creating wealth.
That's why the state passes more and more laws because it needs to turn more people into criminals. It needs to criminalize more activities so that there's more things you can be fined for. There's more things you can be arrested for. There's more things you can be punished for. And this creates the need and the funding for more police with more guns and more cameras. And of course, this is why the state wants more public school shootings. Because with more children getting killed in schools, there's more call for metal detectors in the schools, and more call for cameras in the schools, and more call for police in the schools, and more call for laws that make more things illegal, which means we need more police and more funding because now there's more laws to enforce and we're stretched thin as it is, making sure that the citizens are safe. So what does a public school shooting, not that there would be any such thing because there'd be no public schools, but what would a school shooting in an ANCAP society look like? Well, first we have to think, what would an ANCAP society look like without the public school system, without children from surrounding areas like miles and miles away, all being packed into buses and forced to go to one big prison, <laughs> one big building that looks like a prison. I've talked about this before, how schools built today have one entrance and one exit and they look like prisons inside. In an ANCAP society, instead of children being rounded up in school buses and herded into public schools where they're treated like shit for eight hours of the day, and then we wonder why they're so fucked up mentally, what would happen is neighborhoods, small groups of people would get together and they would put together a plan for educating their children. So let's say in our ANCAP example here, there's a neighborhood of 40 households, and let's say there's 50 children between all of them. So, these 50 children would be somehow divvied up amongst different houses. Perhaps they'd travel around to different houses in different groups, say maybe of 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever, and they would learn things from different people. The person who's good at math would teach them math, and the person good at literature would teach literature, and the person who knew about physics would teach that. And of course, they'd also use this new, there's this newfangled thing. You might have heard of it. It's called the internet, and it has information on it, and... I, some of the information is cute pictures of cats and some of the information is pornography, but there's other stuff on the internet besides cat pictures and porn. Uh, you wouldn't know that from looking at my browser history, but then I'm not a kid. The, so there's this newfangled thing called the internet which they can use to educate themselves and be educated. And there's also these other things these you, you probably have not heard of. They're called books. And what those are is they're made out of a substance called paper, which comes from trees, which, well, literally grow on trees. Unlike the precious metals, which are used in computers and, you know, don't biodegrade and require toxic chemicals to extract them from the ore they come out of. But anyway, these book things, so they're made out of this stuff called paper that comes from trees, which grow on trees. And... On the paper, so the paper is white, and on the paper you can use ink and you can print words, or you can even print photographs and pictures and diagrams and stuff. And so you can use these books, they, they have information in them, you know, things about like, for example, math or physics or cultures in other countries and, you know, things like how before 15 years ago people in Afghanistan weren't getting killed by flying robots. Things like that. So they could be using the internet and these book things and they could be educating themselves and educating each other and being educated by their parents. So this is what school would look like in an anarcho-capitalist society. So let's say that 20 of these kids in this neighborhood are in a house and they're doing some studying stuff. A couple of them are probably looking at cat pictures on the internet. That's cool though. And so a guy comes, hold on, need a drink. A guy busts into this house. He's got his AK-47, his 30-round magazine, and he starts shooting them. Now, 
In our society, of course, what happens, we can look at Columbine as an example, is the people go in and they start shooting people and all of the teachers duck and run for cover because none of them are armed and can't defend themselves. And of course, like at Columbine, the police show up and because as I've been trying to explain to you through this entire podcast and the one in front of it, the police are not there to defend you. They don't they're not there to stop crime. They don't give a shit about you. Like Columbine, the police will show up and they'll stay outside the building because the number one concern of every police officer is, of course, his own fucking safety. If you think that cop is going to go running into that public school to protect a bunch of kids he doesn't know, then you are, well, you're one of the 99% statist stupid people. In our ANCAP society, when this guy, we'll call him Bob, comes into this house where these children are being schooled with his AK-47 and starts shooting the children, here's what's going to happen. First thing that's going to happen is the people who live in that house, the teacher in that house, are all going to whip out their guns and they're going to fucking shoot back. The second thing that's going to happen is the people in the surrounding neighborhood, in the surrounding houses, whose children are in there, are going to hear the gunshots. Because these are their children, not the children of some strangers, their children and their friends' children. Those people are going to grab their AK-47s and they are going to fucking haul ass over there and they're going to bust through the door and anybody they see who is not one of their friends and neighbors and looks dangerous, they're going to shoot them in the fucking face. And that's what a school shooting is going to look like in an ANCAP society. It's going to be very short and it's going to end really fucking badly for the psycho shooter. And again, the psycho shooter isn't going to get to go to trial. And the psycho shooter isn't going to get therapy. And the psycho shooter isn't going to get a nice prison cell. And the psycho shooter isn't going to get clean clothes. And the psycho shooter isn't going to get food. And there's all this stuff is not going to generate economic activity, economic activity for the state and for the prison industrial complex and for the police. And, and then the government isn't going to, because there will be no government, nobody's going to be able to pass more laws. You're going to have a psycho killer who goes in there and tries to kill kids and he's going to die and it's all going to be over with. The whole, the fucking thing is going to take less than seven minutes. Whereas in our society today, where you believe the police and the state and the government are here to protect you from crime, a school shooting takes years, years, years. The psycho shoots some people. The police cower outside like the goddamn pussies they are. Yes, I just called every police officer in the United States a fucking pussy. Right? The police cower outside like the fucking pussies that they are. So, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, three hours, two days, whatever later, you know, the shooter, if we're lucky, kills himself. Otherwise, he doesn't. He gets arrested. The trial goes on for 17,000 years and costs a billion dollars. Okay, that's an exaggeration. The trial goes on for three, four, five, six years. Costs millions and millions, maybe a billion dollars. I don't know. And then more laws are passed. And because now we're going to pass more laws and prevent the school shootings because, you know, because the fact that it's illegal to kill people isn't enough. No, no, no. So your fears, your terror that in an anarcho capitalist society, warlords are going to run around with their gangs and kill people are completely unfounded. A society in which warlords run around with gangs and kill people happens to be the society you live in right now. You're just too fucking stupid to know it. The police can pretty much kill anybody. Who? who, Yeah, what was that? The thing in, was it California? where somebody did see I'm totally not up on current events but somebody did something and so the cops were trying to find him and they shot some grandmother because she was driving a car that looks like his I mean you Randy do you know yeah I know he, yeah the, the, this, this guy what 
I, I don't care what his name is. That the point, you know, the cop shot this fucking woman because she's driving a car that a criminal might be driving. I mean, you're worried, you fucking people out there, you fucking statists are worried that in an ANCAP society there would be gangs running around killing people. I mean, the police, uh, no knock raids on the wrong houses. People dying because the DEA and the cops went to the wrong place. And you're worried that in an ANCAP society, there are going to be gangs running around killing people? We're in Afghan. We, the United States military is in Afghanistan right now, among other countries, killing people. We're killing people with flying robots and flying... Co- and fly- Flying robots in foreign countries. There we go. I got it out. And you're worried that in an ANCAP society, there's going to be warlords running around killing people. I mean, and, and the thing, I, know, I, I was about to say, are you really this stupid? Of course you're this stupid. But I think what I really want to know is, because you, we, we all know that you're stupid. And we all know that you're selfish. I guess ultimately the question I want to know is, how can you be this hateful of other people? How can you want so bad? And how can you be so blind? I don't know if you're blind. I think I think statists recognize that we currently live in a society where warlords are killing people with the support of gangs. I just, yeah, you know, it's it's so hard for me to like go back because I used to be a statist and as I look back it's like why did I believe this stuff and I'm really not even sure because I have that answer because I hadn't thought about that much lately but it's like I can't even for myself I cannot extract like what was it you know 10 years ago that made me believe, you know, all this this shit that we need more laws and that the government can kill people and the government is protecting my rights and my property and stopping crime and all this shit. It's it's like it, you, you, there's just no way to go back, and it's becoming more and more difficult for me to look at people who don't grasp this and to have anything positive to say about you. I mean, how can you not? See how how this is why this podcast is called Stating the Obvious because everything I say should be blindingly obvious. There's I have said nothing here that is not f- completely fucking self evident. Nothing. It's just a- and how can you people not get this? How can you sit here and say we have to have the government? to protect us from crime, while at the same time you're surrounded by crime. The government is obviously not doing a very good job. How can you be so fucking blind to that?